Hey, welcome back to Twin Cities Live. We are celebrating the great outdoors today. This is our special pop-up show, popping right up. It's really fun. We're at Cabela's in Rogers, just loving life. And, you know, getting out hunting is something that is so ingrained in a lot of Minnesota families, including my own, my husband, Jay. You know Jay Reimers. I know him. He's know a him hunter. You love him. He's got the hunter beard and everything. He totally does. He takes our German short hair pointer, Gracie Lou, Lulu, out <laughs> pheasant hunting as often as he can. And what that means, Steve, is that I end up with a ton ton of pheasant in our big deep freezer in the thing. basement. If you're married to a hunter, you must have a deep freeze. And I don't always know what to do with it. Oh, well, enter the man, J.D. Fratsky. He's an avid hunter himself. And he asked Elizabeth to thaw a little bit of that pheasant out because he was coming over to cook. Well, it's not every day that J.D. Fratsky is in my kitchen. <laughs> And what a lovely kitchen it is. I'm so happy that you're here. This is like the anointing of the kitchen, having you here. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an honored guest. We have some pheasant breasts that uh, were brought out of your freezer last night. I I'm pulled really these out of the about. freezer. Yeah. Yeah, I got these out of the freezer last night. So when Jay comes home, this is how he has them all packaged and ready to go. And look what you see in there, Exactly. JD. Steel shot. There you go. So we would always have uh, either geese or pheasants or ducks on uh, the holiday dinner table when I was growing up. You know, I'm... Seventh generation Minnesotan in the southeastern Minnesota Mississippi River Valley. So we would have wild game on the table, and uh, whoever had the most steel shot on their plate at the end of the night got the biggest piece of dessert. <laughs> so. Super excited about this recipe. What are we making? We're going to do pheasant tostadas. Um, they are a quick pickup. They're delicious and they appeal to almost everybody in the family. You know, uh, pheasant breast. You know, you can see it's got a darker color to it, so it almost sort of behaves like uh, like chicken thighs do. Great. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, if it cooks a little bit too long and if there's not a lot of moisture involved, um, it will dry out. Yeah, so, unlike a chicken thigh, which is right. really forgiving. So we're going to help that along by making some salsa verde from scratch. So this is what it feels like to have a chef in your kitchen. It's like <laughs> Like the most exciting thing ever. So we start off with uh, start off with some julienne yellow onion. Okay, so the onion's going in. Yep. And then I'm gonna take garlic cloves. So all we really want to do here is uh, we want to get the oil hot and we want to let these uh, these onions and garlic simmer together until the onions start to brown just a little bit and become translucent. Our pickled jalapenos oh, at this point. Oh, yes. You are speaking my language with this. Yeah. If you like to give people a ride with the chilies, you know, go to town and use those pickled jalapenos and load it up in the pan. Oh, my gosh. Did you <laughs> see that? That was a full-out flame on the pan. That's never happened in this kitchen. Wow. All right. <laughs> I mean... Don't want, we don't want to melt all off. I Can suppose. we know, <laughs> note the spatula that JD chose to use here? <laughs> all right, now we're going to add our tomatillos. Yes, okay, let's discuss tomatillos. These are like such a fun, mysterious ingredient. Yes, they are a member of the tomato family. They are indigenous to, uh, to South America. Um, and you can see they look like a tiny little green tomato, but on the inside, they have far more tiny seeds on the inside. Look at that. If I did that, I feel like it would end up all over the floor. <laughs> so when we get this, you see that it's got this uh, this really nice, you know, viscous sort of property to it. That's the natural sugars from the onion coming in contact with the natural sugars from the tomatillo. It's totally thickening up. Yep, and you can see also um, that our onions are nice and translucent. Yes. Our garlic is brown and it's begun to soften. Yeah. So at this point, um, we're ready to remove this from the heat. Okay, this looks gorgeous. So we've got this ready. Yep, we're gonna turn the speed all the way down on the blender. If you have an adjustable speed blender, make sure you're turned all the way down because we're gonna start really slow with it. So we're gonna start it off slow. We want, we don't want something super smooth. We don't necessarily want it liquefied, but we do want everything broken up. Oh, that's so good. So we're gonna stop and I'm gonna reach over here and we're gonna add some acidity by squeezing about, uh, about a half of a lime worth of juice in here. Just right in there. Yep. Now we're gonna add our cilantro. Cilantro going in. Give it one more little buzz just so that it's mixed through all together. And that's it. This that's is the salsa. We've but we the... don't wanna eat the bullets. <laughs> no, no. We don't wanna eat the steel shot. <laughs> and boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna cut this into thin strips. So and... this is kind of what we do when we make jerky. We cut it really mm -hmm. thin and then we marinate it. All right, come here. You wanna take a look at your work? Let's see what's sunshine. going on. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love your collar. Hey, your thanks. Collar matches my apron. You guys coordinate. <laughs> she says, so this is what you guys do with all those pheasants I get. Yes. yes. <laughs> good girl. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. 
So again, we're gonna start off with a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and we'll pull out our secret weapon. Secret weapon? A secret weapon. Always have some cheap little, beer around this house. A little bit of lager beer. And this time we've got some onions that are diced up, and we're starting to get translucent, and this will be the point where we're gonna add that oh, pheasant in. Look at that. What did There's you find? One more, one ding, more ding, piece ding, of steel ding, shot. Ding. This is looking so Good, so what are we looking for with the pheasant so, here? We don't want this cooked all the way through because this is the point where we want to add some liquid to it. Okay. Like I said, at this point, we're gonna add about four ounces of our secret weapon. This is probably the time when everybody cracks a beer when they're cooking anyway. Exactly. We've got, you know, the beer is reduced, we've got the natural juices from the pheasant coming out, and it's at this point that we're gonna add our salsa verde. Oh my gosh, so that's going in. Yep. I didn't realize that was gonna go in with the pheasant. Yes, absolutely. Okay, this is such a good idea. Oh my gosh, And we're JD. gonna crown our tostadas. This looks so fabulous. That's phenomenal. Thank you. I'm gonna tell you something, you come over to the Reimer's house for dinner, this is what you're having <laughs> forever. Gracie. Outstanding. Thank you for helping us get our pheasant so we can eat these tostadas. Cheers, JD. Here's to your wonderful kitchen. Oh. And thanks for the invitation. And loving the outdoors and cooking what you hunt. Absolutely. That is the way to live life. Thanks, JD. You're and the best. You are. Thank You're, you. Please come over tomorrow again. Okay? Great. <laughs> We're so happy that Chef JD Pratsky is here. Before we get to Chef JD Pratsky, though, I've got, got a question for Elizabeth. What do you got? Since he left your kitchen, yes. have you been able to get like the flames going no, in your kitchen. Not like J.D. You got to get it in. going. I'm telling you, when you have like a person who really knows what they're doing, and I like to cook, but come in and just rev it up. I was just watching him. My eyes were so It was big. like you were I watching the kitchen at we full capacity. Really time. That was a lot of fun. It I mean, was so fun. Yeah. I mean, your kitchen was laid out really well. It was really cool to come in there with a clear idea and to know that that delicious pheasant was going to be available to a steel shot and all. Yeah. Yeah, come on. J.D. did send me an email reminder. Hey, reminder, Elizabeth, take that out of the freezer. It needs to be thought out. Which yeah, no I did. kidding. I saw that email and I appreciated it. Now, we do want to mention, too, J.D., if you don't have pheasant in the freezer, you can make that dish with other things, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, just pretty much any kind of fowl or waterfowl. I mean, duck and goose if you're a waterfowl hunter, but chicken, turkey, uh, that can easily be done with pork tenderloin, um, pulled pork, you know, you name it, you know, your protein of choice. I've even done that recipe with, uh, with fish similar to the dish that we're going to serve today. I have been uh, wanting to eat this. I showed such restraint. I didn't eat it during that whole <laughs> so story. Proud of you. Thank you, JD. I'm proud of me too. Um, this is a walleye curry. Yes. Talk to me about some of the magic sauce that makes this work. Well, one of the things that I love most about the great state of Minnesota is that we all have all these amazing indigenous ingredients. You know, we have you know our two seasons of uh, of winter and not so much winter. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, but while it's while it's deep winter, you oh, would yeah. prefer to be somewhere else on the planet where it's warm, and food is a great way to take us there. So, um, we have a, a, a Minnesota raised squash and coconut milk curry sauce that we made, and wow. then we just simmer the walleye in there with a little bit of seasoning. And uh, there's a pickled chutney of pears, grapes, and bell peppers and jalapenos on top mm. of that. We're serving it over a, a Minnesota hand harvested wild rice from uh, the northern tribes upstate. So it's, uh, like I said, it's got that whole kind of package of Minnesota ingredients while at the same time taking you to a different part of the planet. I oh mean, my that, God. Is, that is great. I'm so glad you were talking for so long because I wanted at least two bites in there. Yeah. I mean, I wish you would have gone on for another solid 15 seconds. That is so delicious. I'm telling you, if you see him, you need to eat whatever he is making. Mm. And I'm really excited to talk to people about Falls mm. Landing, your restaurant in Cannon Falls, because they might not know you were in St. Paul for so long that now you got to drive a tiny bit to come and see you. But tell us about this restaurant. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's literally a half an hour south of the Twin Cities, either uh, St. Paul or Minneapolis. It's 34 minutes from my front door. I live on uh, on, on uh, South Minneapolis on Chicago Avenue. You don't have to say the exact address, right, J.D. Exactly. What's the house number? I was, uh, <laughs> okay. bit, well, I, well, people showing up wanting while I <laughs> Yes, they will. That's right. Um, but uh, no, I, I was uh, approached by a couple of friends of mine and a local business owner from Cannon Falls. Uh, last winter about a project that they had going. It's a food hall right on Highway 52 off the 96 exit. It's about halfway between Rochester and Minneapolis. Um, so we have four different establishments in the food hall. There is Oli's Roadhouse, which has burgers and fried chicken. Uh, we have a butcher shop uh, run by my friend uh, Jake Dimachowski, who's got some really, really great cuts of meat and wild game and, and uh, fresh seafood in our case cool. down there. And then on the other side of the building, we have a restaurant called Falls Landing. And Falls Landing is uh, kind of inspired by Granny's Cabin. Oh, that's um, great. So we've got a sort of a hunting lodge and, and fish camp feel to it. There's a lot of wild game on the menu, freshwater fish on the menu. 
But uh, we want a place where everybody can come in and feel comfortable year round. And so our menu features a lot of ingredients that people in Minnesota and, and upper Midwest are going to be familiar with and some flavors that might take them to some place they didn't know they were going to go. Oh, gosh, J.D., that is so Thanks, cool. Well, listen, we've got these recipes on our website, both of them, so you can go and check it out. Go see J.D. at Falls Landing. And can we just shout out to B.A. Craft Made that Aprons? Nice? That is that nice? uh, an apron that was picked specifically for this event with the camo and the blaze orange. Isn't that You're cool? You're looking good, sir. Thanks JD, for thanks. coming. Love oh, my gosh. You.